Well, a great football game. Um, just proud of the way our guys continue to battle and found a way to win uh, right at the very end. Um, we knew it was going to be this kind of uh, back and forth game. Uh, certainly uh, felt like uh, we, we had some missed opportunities in the first half with some turnovers. Uh, felt like, uh, you know, 7-7 at the half um, could have been a lot different if we had taken care of the football. Um, had some miscues in the special teams. But overall, um, you know, we did some pretty good things against, uh, uh, again, a very good football team. Um, you know, had a, uh, a running game that allowed us to throw the football and uh, a defense that uh, limited, uh, you know, their running game significantly. So, um, again, a lot of positives to take from this game, especially winning the game late and uh, finding a way when, you know, Everett, uh, you know, certainly uh, is, is a guy that uh, never quits, just keeps playing and uh, made a great throw in the corner of the end zone to, to win the football game. So just a great win for Notre Dame and um, let our kids enjoy it. And uh, we'll, we'll nitpick on all the other things that we've got to get better at later, but we're just going to enjoy the victory. Brian, over. just take us through the, the last play, the call, how you felt like that was going to shake out before the Well, start. we got five out, you know, and um, so, you know, if you bring pressure, we're going to have to get the ball out of our hands quickly. They had shown that they were going to play zone down there. Um, it's, a, it's a difficult route to defend um, if we can get all five out. We got five of them out, flooded a zone. Um, Everett just was uh, patient enough, um, you know, to get the ball out and, uh, you know, make a big play. I asked you during the week if you felt like your offense was ready to deliver and, and play winning football against a top defense. How significant is that you won the game on offense against the number one ranked defense in the country? Yeah, and, and I don't think we played our best. You know, I think we got to play better. But, you know, we here, here's the one thing. You know, we, we did a really good job in the last drive of picking up some stunts and blitzes with, with our offensive line. I was really pleased with that. And we started to come together on our combinations and our run game, which is very, very important. So. Uh, we're we're getting there uh, because we saw the kind of defense that we're playing. We're 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 consistently playing at a high level. We got to get our offense there. We're getting closer. We left a lot of points out there tonight against a very good defense. I think we're getting closer. Ryan, to your right again. Sticking with the running game, you mentioned it. Was it something you knew going in that no matter what to keep them off balance? You have to. Yeah. You have to. You, if you just abandon the running game. They're going to drop eight. They're going to double out. Uh, you got no chance. Uh, so we had to keep their backers in the box. We had to have a semblance. Uh, and I thought we did a pretty good job of being patient and hanging in there. And uh, we, you know, obviously there were some mistakes made, but we're getting better at some of the combination blockings that we've been trying to get to with the new combination on the offensive line. And, and, and tonight was a big step for us. Not on the stat sheet, but Sheldon Day, with the, the effort by the rush defense, it seems right. every week he's the most consistent player. No question. I mean, he has separated himself as somebody that, um, you know, is, is a one of the best in the country for us. Brian, can you talk about uh, Jalen Smith stepping up today and also your defense? I don't think there's a whole lot of Notre Dame teams that have gone five games into the season allowing 17 points or less. Yeah, it's um, – First of all, we're getting great play from the front seven. Joe Schmidt, Jalen, uh, James Onowalu. Um, you know, I, I think if you look at the front seven, I think that's where you start. Uh, and then we're getting aggressive cornerback play. You know, two interceptions from Cole Luke. Um, you know, we're, we're playing without Kavari Russell, who arguably was our best corner. Um, you know, we're, we're doing it with guys that are just stepping up and, and uh, you know, being aggressive on the outside. We talked about um, the, the need to, to clamp down on the perimeter. If you're going to play great defense, you have to clamp down. I think that's where we've really made significant improvement over the course of the year. We're really starting to clamp down on the outside. David Shaw thought weather played a lot of havoc with the <coughs> quarterbacks. How about with special teams? And the whole hold and snap field goal for us, it was the snapping was a little bit. Uh, I mean, we're, we were clearly the conditions played a role in it. To answer your question, um, we got to catch the snap. We got, we got to understand that you know we got to pace that ball back there a little bit. But um, 
we we found a uh, a revolutionary idea that that um, will will probably um, be now the biggest thing in college football. We're going to put gloves on the holder, and that seemed to be uh, the way to to accomplish greatness uh, in this game. Unbelievable! I've been in this thing for 25 years, and we're <laughs> we're coming up with new things uh, every day. I said, "How about we try gloves on the holder?" <laughs> Has anybody figured that one out? Uh, they thought I said, "Well, we'll get into it later." But <laughs> special teams, <laughs> definitely, we needed uh, obviously to use the pooch kick. Um, you know, we did that on the kickoff when we were kicking into the wind. Um, but other than that, I thought Kyle Brins had punted. When, the, when we were backed up, he came through with a great punt. So I thought we managed, other than the two drop um, snaps, I thought we managed the special teams very well. We got our first block punt since 2010. Um, I thought we did some pretty good things in special teams. It gave us a chance to win today. When, when you got the ball the last time, I mean, how did you feel about Everett's mental toughness, and where do you think that comes from? Uh, you know, he's a winner. I mean, I don't know what his numbers are, but he's like, what, what is he, 15 and he's 15 and 1 as a starter. And, you know, I don't know how many games he lost in high school, but he didn't lose many in high school either. And so the kid's a winner, and, and, and he keeps competing, and he keeps playing. And he's got a bunch of winners around him. And so you never feel like you're out of it. You just keep playing and, and, and you know, keep giving it a shot, throwing the ball down the field. I thought we did a really good job protecting. I think that was really key for us uh, in that last drive. They knew we were throwing it, and they were bringing their stunts and three-man games, and we did a pretty good job. Brian, third row on your right. Two years ago, continuing on this thread, this is the type of game where Everett probably would have come out and you'd put Tommy in. Yeah. Now, you don't have Tommy, obviously, but what difference are you seeing in Everett in this exact situation? Well, he's better. He's no, there's no question. There's, it's the maturity and, and, and the development and – He's the guy that's got to do it. There's, there's, you know, we're not going to the bullpen. You know, Tommy Reese is not coming in. There's nobody. He is our guy, and he's got to come through. Now, when he gets in this situation, I think he's even going to be better than he was today. I, I think he's, you know, missed a couple of throws on that drive, and, and he knows it. He's going to even be better. I think this was really his first, this was his first two-minute drive, really, if you really look at it. This was truly his first one, and, and I think he's going to be better for it. Going into this one, did you see a bit more of an innate confidence because there was nobody behind him that he knew it had to be him? No, not necessarily. I think it, this whole thing is his, right? So it, there's nobody else to turn to. The whole game's his. And, you know, obviously he was disappointed with the turnovers, but he knew that he's got to come back and he can't let that affect him. He's got to keep playing. Lastly from me, aside from the revolutionary gloves, did you say anything to Hunter going back out there for the third time? We had a conversation before he went out the third time and, and um, just said, you know, I, I didn't want to put Newsom out there and, and, and burn up his, his red shirt. You know, that's the last thing I wanted to do, really, in that situation and not know whether we were going to whip that thing through his hands, too. You know, then I'm standing here in front of you guys and it's not going to be pretty. So uh, we said, let's try the gloves and, and – uh, we had him work on the sideline with him a little bit. He was taking snaps. And um, he's a pretty mature kid, you know. And, and I, I looked at him, and he didn't look like he was um, in the tank, if you know what I mean. You know what I mean? He, 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 it seemed like he obviously was disappointed, but I didn't sense like if I throw him out there, he's going to miss another one to answer your question. Coach, I know you say you don't get it's right here. I know you say you don't get too wrapped up in the in the rankings, but there were some people around the country questioning the legitimacy of you guys being a top ten team. How big of a statement do you think this was for you guys today? Don't know. I don't think we beat a top ten team, did we? So they'll they'll come up with something next week, which is fine. You know, Brian, over here. You've been you know doing this for so long. When you have a team that's this young. <laughs> to have a win like this, you know, a three-point win right down to the last second, what does this do for the mentality of the team going forward, you know, in terms of believing that they can pull this off? Um, you know, uh, I think they take their cue from, from me and the coaches, and we all believe in them. 
uh, and and there's nobody walking around feeling like we can't win every game we play. And it's going to be hard. I mean, and we've said this. You know, we're we're not perfect. You know, we turned the ball over again today, and we have a jump ball and cover. You know, two man where we should be picking the ball off. That's ridiculous. I mean, I mean, but that's who we are. I mean, we're we're a little inexperienced in those things, but. We have great belief in our kids, and they believe in us, and we believe in them, and we're going to go play every game and um, with, with the thought that, that we can win every game we play. I don't know if breakthrough would be the right word, but how would you describe the reaction for Ben Koyak to have that big play at the end there? His numbers <laughs> obviously not what it was huge. his tight ends were. But. It was huge. We, we were struggling a little bit with, with some of his blocking um, assignments. Um, he's so central and critical to what we're doing in our re zone option stuff and and he had a lot going on there today and we, we, we made some mistakes and so it was great to see him get a big catch late no it's probably the last thing on your mind right now but the last hearings were yesterday did you hear anything in the last 24 hours about the five players no i i did not i've talked to f uh, most of them um i know they're over with and um we should know something next week Yeah, Good. Brandon, over here, uh, Stanford's yes. offense always prides himself on being so physical. Yeah. What does it mean for your defense, especially with so many young guys, to match them and in some cases defeat them physically? Yeah. Well, you know, we're we've developed our program. We we should be here in five years. I mean, this is where you know you evaluate your program in five years. Where year one we got knocked around. I mean, physically, and and so this is where you should be going into year five of your program where. Even though you, you lose to it and you lose Knicks and you lose Shembo and you lose, you know, Fox and Jackson and all these guys are playing on NFL teams, you bring the next batch of guys in and they're physically able to compete with arguably one of the more physical teams in, in college football. So that's where you want your program to be after five years. Good.